I was reading an article this morning, uh, the 99 percenters, they're calling him, the vast majority of Americans who are getting serious cases of COVID-19 or dying are actually the unvaccinated. And it turns out that uh, it's only 0.65 of 1% of the people who are hospitalised, less than 1% yeah, yeah. Uh, were, were those who were doubly vaccinated. Right. So vaccination is a huge preventer of hospitalisation and it's less than 1% of the people who die in America yeah. um, are unvaccinated So or are doubly vaccinated. That's so right. vaccination is the key. Incredible data. I mean, again, that would have been predictable from the trials. We knew these vaccines were tremendous, you know, from clinical trials. We then go into humans. We see protecting in humans and then we see a new variant arising and you're absolutely right this is this is going to make unvaccinated people sicker and that's exactly what's happened so that was all predictable in a way but it's great to see. it's amazing data Pat, isn't it, to see that mm-hmm. so so yet again the advice if you want to have the best chance against this virus get vaccinated is the message from that data it's, it's not based on you know sort of a notion the data Opinion. is there to support yeah. that now, uh, what about the idea that it might go into animals? You know, we n- suspect that we may have got it from animals or from the lab, depending on which conspiracy theory you believe. Uh, but the idea that it would go back into animals. Yeah, that's happened to other viruses. So so we now infect an animal. Like the mink was a good example, as you may remember, of how the minks were getting infected. Mm-hmm. There's a risk of a changing in the mink or some other animal and going back into us. So in other words, evolution can happen in other creatures and the virus can change there as well. And now a new one emerges in those animals, if you like, and they're reinfects us and that could be another source of you know a more d- dangerous virus in a way back and forth to phenos and animals and that's something that they're watching for closely of course which is very important um, but these these things are all being monitored they're predicting Pat by the way this will continue to change we will see more variants that, that's like the flu basically because the flu does that and booster shots will be variants that, that's the definite prediction now especially UK scientists saying say next winter for instance there'll be a campaign against whatever the variant is and that will protect us Yeah, and it looks like, uh, you know, this process will happen again and again where you get um, some uh, strange virus going into an animal, going into us, and we are the most widely dispersed uh, species on the planet, so um, we will be the carriers. But they're they're actually working very hard in parts of the world to predict and then potentially avoid the next uh, epidemic. That's right. Now, that's the next question for scientists. People shouldn't be worrying there'll be another huge pandemic in the coming months that'll put everything backwards. That's very unlikely. But there is the risk of more pandemics and we've known this for decades anyways you know so that even more now than ever they're trying to prote- prepare for that you know and try to mitigate against it I guess and and there's no doubt that overpopulation is one reason for this because the, the more of us that are there the more likely it is a virus will jump into one of us you know and overpopulation is being seen now as a big risk for, for future pandemics but but in Gabon is the country that that's really interesting they've set up a fantastic screening system to look for new viruses basically and they've set up special labs the Japanese are helping them and the European Union and this is the early detection of viruses so they're taking blood samples of people who got a fever that they've started people with fevers and they're identifying what virus is in that person and they're finding I mean in Gabon you've got Zika yellow fevers there already a virus called chikungunya which actually my lab has worked on so they see those already but of course they're looking for new ones you know so in other words we will see more and more of this by the way Pat there will be special sentinel labs in different countries where there's a risk of, of another pandemic and they'll be measuring this to help and put the fire out quickly is the idea and of course it's extremely mm. important because we don't want another pandemic by any means, do we? So, so all those things are, are underway. Now, the other thing that looks very promising is um, DNA vaccines. How are they different from uh, the mRNA vaccines? And, you know, are they going to be cheaper? Are they going to be better? Yeah, this is th- this is really good because we've always thought that DNA vaccines might be useful. They were making them for quite a while before COVID. Now, what this is, is you're using the DNA molecule. That, that's what the vaccine's made of. And you inject DNA into someone. That makes the RNA. And the RNA then makes the spike in this case. And then you make an immune response. Now, of course, the RNA cuts out the DNA. You can just use RNA directly. And that's what the Pfizer and, and Moderna vaccines are. But DNA was always a prospect because it's much more stable. It's easier to store. You don't need these ultra cold temperatures. And you don't need to use a knee needle, amazingly, Pat. Like you, you can get this DNA into your skin using a kind of high pressure device. And that was always a prospect. But now they've got one. It's called Zycovd. It's made by an Indian, very reputable Indian vaccine manufacturer. They've done trials. They got a high level of efficacy in the trial. And it's a DNA vaccine that doesn't need to be injected. Now you can imagine, Pat, if that gains traction, people would prefer not to be injected somewhat anyway. And then it is showing this high efficacy. So they're, they've now basically, I guess you might say, cracked the DNA technology to get another type of vaccine. And it gives us yet another vaccine to use against COVID.